I'm here with Brian Litz, who's the chief ballistician for Burger Bullets and Applied Ballistics. One of the most mysterious components that long-range marksmen try to contend with is the BC of their bullets. You know, am I getting an accurate BC? Is it correct? Am I getting the right results in my solution? Well, one of the things that is wonderful about what Brian does is that he measures our BCs for us. And these are verified ballistic coefficients. Brian, how is it that you go about getting an accurate BC for a bullet? Uh, there's a couple different ways. At the Applied Ballistics Lab, we've got uh, synchronized chronographs that will set at the muzzle and at 300 yards and will measure the velocity decay of the bullet over 300 yards. If we have some higher BC bullets that are intended for long range or extended range shooting, we'll measure muzzle velocity and then time of flight at you know 1,000 yards, 1,200 yards, whatever the range is, and that gives us more resolution on those higher BC bullets to measure downrange time of flight. Now, is there an optimal distance over which to measure the BC of a bullet? Um, you want to measure the extent of the supersonic range. That's minimal. You want to get that really good. If you want to model the, the custom drag of a specific bullet, you've got to also measure points near Mach 1 at the transonic zone so that you're measuring accurately the transonic drag of the bullet. And by the way, that is very sensitive to twist rate. So a bullet will retain RPMs into the transonic zone. Uh, and you have to, if you're downloading the bullet to match that speed, then you have to shoot it from a faster twist barrel to match the stability condition as well. So it's, in theory, it, in principle it's easy, but in practice there's a lot of details. So when you go to get a verified BC on a, a particular projectile, how many rounds are you putting down range? Um, a 20, 20 to 25 rounds, and I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but these are all instrumented rounds. You know, every shot we have atmospherics, every shot we have, you know, high resolution measurements of velocity or time of flight, and so 20 or 25 rounds is the minimum to get a good supersonic BC. To get a custom drag model from Transonic, it's more like 50 or 60, 70 shots, you know, to really map out the drag in Transonic. Now, just to explain the principle, we talk a lot about a drag curve. Drag varies over the speed of relation to Mach of the projectile. Just tell us a little bit about how that works. Yeah, so every, every different bullet shape will have um, different drag coefficients at different Mach numbers, okay? And those points are measured one at a time and, you know, by loading specific velocities. And then when you have enough of those points together, you have a table of Mach versus CD points and that's your drag model. Now, the G1 and G7 standard curves are basically they're, they're standards, right? So whenever you measure a BC against those curves, you're referencing the BC of the bullet to the G1 or G7 standard. And those are good if you have bullets that are representative of those standards, but if you want the most accurate drag modeling that you can get, especially through transonic, where the drag of a bullet is highly dependent on its shape, then that's when you have to measure these drag points in transonic for individual bullets and generate a drag model specific to a bullet. Okay, if you're running a bullet solver that is using a BC and it is doing drag modeling unless you're entering details unless you're entering details of the bullets geometry you're not getting a true custom drag model for that bullet okay and once we have that true custom drag model that forms kind of the foundation for the ballistic solver and it allows us to be incredibly accurate that's right the, the biggest unknown that you'll have if you're running a custom drag model is muzzle velocity. So at that point, if you can measure your muzzle velocity and you're using a custom drag model that is meant to work in the solver that you're using, you can be incredibly accurate out to extended range, even through transonic with your first shot without chewing your solver. Okay, so there you have it. There is some of the inner workings of how a BC is determined, how it's verified, and then how it's used to shoot accurately. Brian, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right.